dealing here with a, a series that I want to keep building us because it's important. When we started the month of June, the Lord says, tell my people they can build again. Yes. Tell them they can build again. We've come to the half of the year, and as you look ahead to the next five or six months that are facing you, God says, so you believed God when you started the year. You had your resolutions all marked, what you wanted to do, and you did not end up fulfilling those dreams. But the Lord said, I should say to you, from the month of June, facing December, you can build again. Amen. Say this with me, I'm going to build again. Amen. Say like you believe it, I'm building again. Amen. For some of you that have not broken that promise, you keep on building. And you could see what God is going to do over your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Now, in building our lives, you've got to understand that we build not in a vacuum. We build with relationships. Yeah. So when you take the Lord Jesus Christ in your life as the Lord and your Savior, one of the most um, critical things is to understand the relationships that God brings to your life. I said this to you last time. Uh, this is message was preached by one of my friends uh, that I relate with and we talk and discuss the Bible and therefore he said some things that I want to bring across to us. Love God's people biblically. Amen. Amen. Say that with me. Yes. Love God's people biblically. That's number one. Number two, value them equally. Yes. Amen. Say that with me. Value them equally. But here's the catch. Here's the catch. You can't treat them the same. You love God's people according to the Bible. Doesn't matter gender, race, tall, short. You can't have your own people that you like. According to the Bible, we are supposed to love all. According to the Bible. You are with me? As we grow and as we move as God's people, it's important for me to know that according to the Bible, it doesn't matter their race, it doesn't matter their skin color, it doesn't matter their culture, their pedigree, where they come from. It's a command. Love God's people and love one another. And it's important, therefore, that I understand according to the Bible, I am supposed to love all people. But number two, I'm supposed to value them according to the word of God, yes. equally. When you look that at your life and you begin to love them according to the Bible, you value them equally, but you treat them differently. What do I mean by that? What that means that not everybody has access That's right. to your life. That's right. True. Yeah. Yeah. The space that my daughter and my son holds in my life yeah. is not the same you hold. The space that Shelly holds in my life is not the space that every woman holds in my life. You love God's people biblically. You value them equally, but you treat them differently. Why is that important for you? If you're going to grow in your relationship with Christ, it's important for you to know that God brings different kinds of people in our lives. I was mentoring uh, one of my sons and I was saying to them, beware of expired mentors because in life, everybody needs a mentor. We have spoken about this. If you remember, two weeks ago, I spoke about everybody needs collaborators. Everybody needs clarifiers. Everybody needs catchers. You need comforters. You need confronters. You need people that can tell you when you are wrong because you are not almighty. There is only one else shall die. Somebody said, or else you shall die. So you understand that in life as you walk with God, you need those people that can confront you. You need those people that can comfort you when things are tough. You need people in your life that are catching you so that even when you fall, you know that they are there for you and they are supporting you. Amen. It's important that you understand that. So as I build on this series, I wanted to understand something very, very interesting what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's start there. Let me give you three verses of scripture and then I release you. Chapter 2 and verse 18, the book of Genesis. And I want us to read in an amplified version, all of us, one, two, go. Now the Lord God said, it is not good, beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. And it's important for you to know that that one wasn't talking about the wife. First, because you don't need a wife first, you need a helper first. Yes. Oh my. Come on. 
It's important for you to understand, therefore, that God brings people in your life to complement what you have. So, the purpose of people in my life is destiny. Say that with me. The purpose of people in my life is destiny. Let me hear you say it. The purpose of people in my life, it's destiny. Everybody that God brings across your path, God brings them to help you fulfill your destiny. And the only example I can give you is be the example of our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when he chose the 12 disciples, you know the story? Yeah. All 12 of them were weird. <laughs> and instead of troubling you and giving you all 12 of them, I'll give you five of them. And you'll see how weird they were. So that helps me. That helps me that in my journey of destiny, I need to know where I place you. Because I need to call the right person when I'm in a burdened situation. I need to call the right person when I, I am crying and I'm in tears. I need to know that I call the right person when I need to fulfill a vision, a business endeavor. The last thing that you want to do is when you say, God has given this vision that I want a business endeavor that I want to start here in Gosnells. And then they say, ha, huh? in Gosnells? Are you sure? Ha, huh? ha, huh? must be dreaming. That's the last thing that I need in my life. But if I call on the right person, we can say right in God's nails. God can raise a businesswoman. God can raise a businessman. Why? It's a matter of knowing who do I call first in my life. Everybody needs to know that you need a mentor in your life and run away from expired mentors. Who do I call expired mentors? Ex expired mentors are mentors who now are jealous of you. We tried this, I tried this, 1940, it did not work. I tried this, 1980, who do you think you are? Prayer warrior, prayer warrior, my fault. What are you trying to do? We have done this and God has never done it. Run away from expired mentors. God says something to, uh, to, uh, uh, to Samuel. When he calls him to go and anoint David a king, he starts by saying in chapter 16, Saul, oh, uh, uh, what? Samuel, Samuel, why are you still crying? After Saul, because I have exited him. So in my life, it's important. Who I call a mentor. I think you use that word mentor just cheaply. Because when I'm talking about a mentor, the story is of Elijah and Elisha. You walk where they walk. Problem with this generation, you are after quick fixes. So you don't want to go through the doldrums and the pit valleys that I went through in my life because you want instant success. So if you want the anointing of God that is upon my life, you need to go through. Start in Zimbabwe where I started. Walk with me in those places when there was no food on the table. Walk with me in those times where we slept hungry and there was nothing. Walk with me in those valleys when I had one t-shirt in my life. Walk with me. That's how it is. That's what mentorship is all about. When Elisha therefore walks with Elijah, you find out the first place that it takes him is Gilgal. And Gilgal means a place of circumcision where God wants to cut out some stuff. Don't become an apostle overnight. Don't become an evangelist overnight. Don't become a prophet overnight. Don't become this mighty man of God, Ben Hinn, overnight. Don't become Catherine Kuhlman overnight. You have to go through all the stages. Somebody shout amen. It's not good for men to be alone. And it's important, therefore, that I know that way I place you. So beware of expired mentors. Say that with me. Beware of? Number two. Beware of jealous colleagues. Jealous colleagues, you know, because I'm a Zimbabwean, I understand my accent sometimes <laughs> sucks a lot of people. Sorry. All right. <laughs> She's asking me. She's all right. Uh, colleagues that are jealous. Colleagues, you call them colleagues. Don't you call colleagues? Huh? What's a colleague? A colleague is not a friend? Huh? A colleague, right? Yeah. Beware. Gee, you are here, my boy. <laughs> wonderful to see you. Oh, thank you. It's 
I'm a special children. It's important. It's important you understand that sometimes in life we have what I call jealous colleagues. These are people that have no interest at all for you to rise up and become better than them. And therefore, they are jealous of every move that you do. You start, and you too, stop talking everything that God is telling me. You know, God showed me this, and then God showed me that. You talk too much. It's not everybody that's going to understand you. Oh, Joseph, all he did was to share his dream, and it ended in a pit. It's important that on the end, you see, thank God he rose up out of the pit. Some of you get in the pit, you never rise up again. You look at yourself where you are right now, it is because sometimes you yap, yap too much. Sometimes you tell everybody about everything. And when you see that happening, usually it's selfishness and ego. 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 I want you to know so that I also hear also from God. And it's important therefore you understand seasons of your life, who you talk to, who you tell about the dream that God see you. Because there's a verse that I love in the book of Luke. It says, when the angel appeared to Mary about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, and she kept these things to herself. I love that. I just thought I should throw it out there. You know, so that you can understand that you don't have to talk everything. There are things that God whispers to you when you are alone. And you keep it until it comes to fruition. You keep it. Hmm? Sometimes everybody says, what's going on in my life? Everything is good. Mm -hmm. You keep it within you. Allow God to grow that thing properly in you. When the right time comes, it will appear. Because sometimes what God impregnates with us, it's like a baby. It will show. At the right time. It will show. Beware of expired mentors. Beware of jealous colleagues. And beware of what are called parasites. Parasitic proteges. These are proteges that are draining you. We all have 24 hours. If you have got people that are around your life that are like students that want to learn from you, but they never learn. Yeah, yeah come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Don't drain my energy. Come Don't on. waste my time. Yeah. What I told you, I told you, you remember I told you last year? Yeah, it hasn't changed. Yeah. What I told you then, I told you again in January? It hasn't changed. And then I repeated it again in March? It hasn't changed. If you don't live a prayerful lifestyle, you can't move forward. So they drain your energy. They drain your energy. Somebody shout, I am building. building. Shout again, I am building. building. It is not good for men to be alone. So it's important for you to understand. But number two verse that I wanted to see, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 19. It's a very interesting scripture. In 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 5 and verse 6. It's a story that is very painful when you come to think of it. Ah, let's read together that one in NIV. Want to go? Then Job went into the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all your men who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. What's going on there? Something very painful is happening in David's life there. His son Absalom has a reason against him. He wants to take over his kingdom. Now, Job, these are men that have saved David's life. But watch what verse 6 says. Verse 6, to go. You love those and... Stop right there, don't rush, don't rush. It's very important, that verse. I want you to read it again, just that first part. And I want to read it out louder. Increase your volume a little bit in destiny. And let's hear what it says once again. You love those who hate you. You hate those who love you. And that's where many of us fail. Because you do not know who is for you. So you end up pushing away those that are for you. And you accept in your life those who are against you. You wonder why you are not growing in your Christian faith. What are you doing to your relationships? David, here. When he says, you love those who hate you and you hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. He was mad. 
that king, I don't understand it. You are protecting your family because he is your son. But your son wants you dead. We have gone to the military and fought the battle. We fought the battle to protect you from your son who wants to kill you. But still, no thank you. All you see, you are protecting your family because it's your family. The devil is a liar. I want you to understand in your life that as you walk with God, God's desire is for you to know who comes into my space. Who is necessary for the destiny that God has set for me? That does not mean, that does not mean push away your family members. All what that means is be wise yes, that's right. when you deal with them. So, yeah. When I went into ministry, my own mom and daddy, they did, not, they did not approve of it. They did not approve of it, not yeah. because they were against me. They did not approve of it because they thought they were protecting me. That why would you go for ministry? You are a clever guy. Go back to school and get educated and come bring money home. They were right about it. But that was not God's will for me. You get my point? So family, they do come with their own different kind of baggages. All I'm saying right now here is, I don't want to leave this church and then say that mama, I was told that I got push away. No, 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 no. Your mama is your mama, your daddy is your daddy, loves the family in the way that they're poor, but know where to place them in life. Because if you place them at a place that is not right for your destiny, you will never fulfill the destiny that God has set for you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Do I make sense? Yes. So the Bible says, Job said that because he knew exactly what David had done. When you come to look at the life of David, generally, he sucked in relationships, didn't he? Amnon, Tama, Judah. You know the story. Uh, you, you, you know all the stuff that was happening in David's life right at the tail end of his life. Because if you don't master your relationships, they call it in uh, psychology and counseling, it's the relational intelligence. I need to know how to handle my relationships quite well. Because if I do not know where to space you and where to, to, uh, where to put you in my life, in my cycle, I'm going to have problems in fulfilling the destiny that God has set for me. Now, the last verse that I want to give you right now, it's Matthew chapter 26 from verse 20 to verse 24. Matthew chapter 26. Let's see what it says in verse 20. Let's read all of us together. One, two, go. When evening came, Jesus was reclining and while Doesn't it sound very, very normal? You know, I'm there for you. You know, I've been there for you. Get healed. Hmm. <laughs> that was cool. And it says, Jesus replied. I wanted to, to see the answer that Jesus gives there. The reply of Jesus Christ. One to go. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. I'll tell you what I like about that. I love the fact that Jesus saw it, Jesus knew it, but Jesus did not demean and devalue Judas. Said the truth, the one who is dipping with me. Here's what you do. I don't want to see you ever again in my life. Push them away and I don't want to see you again. But Jesus teaches me a higher way. Let them sit at your table. He has wisdom. He has maturity. Can you sit with them at your table knowing exactly who they are? The value of your relationships is key. To reach a place in my life, master, that I can be like you. That you chose them and you knew very well that the ones that were choosing, none of them were perfect. So I call it in walking with God towards your destiny. One of the key things you need to learn, you need to learn imperfect relationships how to manage them because you are surrounded by them whether you like it or not let me give you five of them using that text as an example number one there was judas that was chosen by jesus and when he chose Judas, it is not like he chose Judas after he had Domino Pizza. No, no, no. He had gone for prayer. The Bible says he spent the whole night praying. But Judas was chosen. 
what does that teach me? It teaches me that in my walk and in my journey as I walk with God, God is going to bring somebody who is like a Judas. Judas is a taker. He held the bag of the money, but he was a thief. Yeah. Yeah. But not only was he a thief, he was a betrayer. Wow. Wow. Yeah. How can you handle your Judas? Because all of us in our life, you are not going to have perfect people. If there is a prayer that you are praying, Lord, just send me the right people to my life. I can tell you right now, don't waste your tears. Don't waste your prayers because that prayer is not answered. Because I can tell you right now that in your life, there's going to be a Judas. Those are people that come into my life. And they come into my life and all they do is to remove. They take away stuff from me. And uh, there is a reason why God brings them across my path so that I can understand. Because I often say to God's people, you can only live one of the three ways. You can either live a culture's way, or you can live church's way, which is religious, or you can live king's way, which is Jesus' way. Here is Jesus' way. Because your culture's way teaches you Push them away. Throw them away. Don't even see them again. Ever again. Delete them from your phone. Don't talk to them. But the Jesus way, the king's way is know that they are there. Yes. Because you need them. When you come now to think of it. Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. Without Judas, Jesus wouldn't have been betrayed. Without the betrayal of Jesus, there will be no crucifixion. Without crucifixion, there will be no salvation. You need Judas in your life. Every destiny of your life, it's marked by Judases. But I want you to understand how to handle the Judases in your life. Every family has one. Every Christian has one. There is a Judas that comes to your life. Those that will betray the destiny that God has given you. But you, you will find out that next to Judas was not only Judas. I say after Judas, you then find out, 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 you then find out. 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 Yeah, I know Sean, right? Yeah. This is you. You need Judas. Never forget that. If there is a revelation that I want to get in your life, you need Judas. Because without Judas, you can be pushed. That's why I often say, every Hannah needs a Penina. Because Penina is the one that provokes. Is the one that has got more when you have got nothing. So when you've got nothing right now in your life, you look at yourself and you think, God does not love me. God favors others above me and God likes others above me. God never hears my prayer. It's the devil's lies that is ministering to you. Actually, somebody said when God delays in your life, he wants to come in a big way. Whenever you see him delaying in your life, he wants to come in a big way. And when he comes, he will come. You will know that this is God. It was not man. Somebody shout amen. Amen. There is a Judah somewhere in your life, but not only that, in your life also, you'll find out all what's important there is to know where, how to treat them as they come in your life. You are sitting here and they all come around your space. You have got a Judas in your life, but also have a Thomas in your life. Now, a Thomas in your, remember Thomas? Thomas was the boy, the boy that never believed until he saw. So, you know now, if I go to the doctor... And the doctor tells me a report about my body. I better know. I don't need to tell Thomas. Because if I tell Thomas in my life, you know exactly. Oh my gosh. Do you have insurance? Let's prepare. What casket do you want? Uh, Because, oh yeah, no, this is terminal. You know, the doctor has already said, you know, this is going to be very hard. Oh no. You know, don't worry about it. We meet in glory. We meet in heaven. I don't need Thomas when I'm going through a difficult situation. Because I know exactly Thomas is going to pull me down. Thomas tells me, be real. So they say to him, Thomas, Jesus is risen. said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And they say, hey, Tom. Not that one. (laughs) Thomas, we are telling you the truth. Jesus has appeared to us. We can't lie. All of us here telling you that Jesus has appeared. And he says, I don't believe you. I love you guys, but I don't believe you. 
until he had to get inside the house, John chapter 20. The Bible says Jesus entered in. He just entered in. And when he entered in, and then he says to Thomas, Thomas is seeing this is Jesus, but Thomas says, I still don't believe. I don't believe. And Jesus says, okay, Tom. Uh, you want me to undress? Uh, you see this wound here? That's me. Now he believed. Thomas is in your life. They bring doubt to the dream that God has given you. Now what do we do? Don't push the Thomases away, but be aware of them. Because your faith can grow where there is doubt. Faith can be leveled. You can grow more stronger in the things of God in the midst of doubt. So you need a Thomas. So number one, you need a... And you need a... That's right. But not only that, not only that in your life, not only that in your life, 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 in your life. You need Nathaniel. He was a disciple. I'm not quoting things. I'm not just bringing names, okay? These are names that were chosen. Twelve disciples of Jesus Christ. There was Judas. There was Thomas. There was Nathaniel. Who is Nathaniel? Nathaniel's problem is he's blunt. He is truthful, but not tact. Say it as it is. Take it or leave it. Say it as it is. This is just who I am. Receive the truth. Whether you like it or not, I said it. So what? That's Nathaniel. I love you, Nathaniel, but Nathaniel, there are certain places, God forbid, I can't take you. I can't take you if I'm going to sign a deal with the businesses. And already he's saying, uh, how do I know you're going to do this? How do I know that you're going to do this? They are truthful, but there's no tact. Do you know the Bible says when you speak the truth, it's not just speaking the truth. It says, speak the truth in love. Yeah. Do you get the difference? Yeah. There are a lot of people here who know how to tell the truth. Yeah. I'll just say it as it is. I'll just say it as it is. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Hold your voice. Calm your farm. Calm your farm. Calm your farm. Because it is important that truth is not just truth because you know how to say it. You speak the truth. Love. In your life, you have got a... You have got a... You have got a... Oh, dear Lord. You are surrounded. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> then there is this brother here. On a good day, they call him Peter. <laughs> the problem with Peter is he's very temperamental. Okay? Peter is one of those. <laughs> Peter is one of those. Everybody is saying, who are you? And some say Isaiah, some say Jeremiah, some say one of the prophets. And Peter says, ah, shut up, all of you. <laughs> Let me tell you who you are. You are Jesus, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed to you. Yeah. Peter says, Yes. <laughs> He moves around them. You heard that, Judas? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yep. And then, and, and, and watch, 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 watch. Then Jesus says, Peter, on that revelation that you got, that I am Jesus, the son of the living God, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter says, guys, you've heard it. When you hear after I'm gone, the cold church is St. Peter's. That's why. It is because I got it. I got this. But the problem with this brother, he's so temperamental that at some point when Jesus is going through trouble, you always, you need a Peter. You need a Peter. Because one time he can give you one revelation. But in the time of trouble, he says, who are you talking about? Uh... You look like the one that was with that man called Jesus. You remember? No, not me. Not me. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Don't try and put, don't even brush me with those, with those mob. I, I was not even there. I was never there. You're talking to the wrong guy, mate. I'm not the one. Three times he denies. But at one point, he gets it right in revelation. Not only that. 
Peter is one of those guys, unpredictable. He has a sword, but now the sword is shorter. He hides it in his pistol. And then when he walks around and uh, they are talking, Jesus is now being arrested. He pulls out the sword and he cuts off the ear of one. Peter is temperamental. You can tell that he can be super spiro. Oh, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. God is going to do it, brother. Karabakashika. Woo-ha! Spiritual jiu-jitsu. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen over your life. But when the tide is low, it goes exactly against that you are trying to do. In your life, there will be a Judas. In your life, there will be Thomas. In your life, there will be Nathaniel. And in your life, there will be a Peter. So it's important that you and I understand how we value the relationships around us. And I'm pretty sure you are aware with me that already you are surrounded by this type of people around you. The whole idea is to know who do I place where. Surely when I need my vision to be fulfilled and I need the revelation of God, I might call Peter. Peter, come here. But when I'm going for conflict resolution, I don't need Peter. Because if I bring Peter, Peter is going to mess up what I'm trying to reconcile. You know? Because he can... Peter will come and say, who is that? What are they saying about you? Okay. Can I come? Yeah, let's go. Uh, Let's go. Let's go and sort out this thing because I'm not going to take any crap out of them. I want to make sure that actually they can't talk like that to you. That's Peter. You don't need a Peter when you want to make peace with somebody. Do you understand me? So knowing who to pull and how to call, that's wisdom. That's wisdom in your life. Your destiny is surrounded, that's the problem. Your destiny is surrounded by doubters. Your destiny is surrounded by those who are temperamental. Your destiny is surrounded by those who are jealous of what you are doing. So they're all surrounding you and it's important for you to know the difference. But you need the last one. You need... (laughs) <laughs> who said John beautiful yes. wonderful to see you evangelist you need James and John they are called the sons of thunder and they are called the sons of thunder for a moment because these ones these ones whatever they are the only way to fix a problem <laughs> angry there's no peace talk. There, there is no peace talk. You can't even finish a statement. So, the, see, James and John and Peter, I'll put them quite close down. Because when I give orders to Peter, I say to Peter, Peter, we are now going inside there. Please be civil. <laughs> Peter, 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 Peter. No, understand, we have, got, we, have, we have got a dinner. We've got my cousins are coming. I've got your nephews are coming. Yes, I know. They were not there for you when you're growing up. You know, Uncle Jerry is coming too. So please, all I'm saying is be civil. All what I want tonight is a peaceful night. You better warn Peter. Because I can tell you, Peter is going to be sarcastic. Peter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to just stir things up. Just for the sake of stirring things up. And he will stir them up. So you need a Peter. But... Close to Peter, remember, you have got the sons of thunder. The sons of thunder, all they understand, they've got a temper problem. (laughs) They saw one day, others were casting out demons, and uh, they're called the John disciples. And they say, hey, what are they doing? Don't they know that you have come, shut down every ministry? You you, You are the guy? Can we tell us what to do? Because we can go and send fire. Finish all of them there. Fire! Finish all of them. So you wonder sometimes why. You are living a lonely life, not because there are no people around you, but you don't know where to place them. Did you hear me? If you know where to place people, that there are people, even in this church in Destiny, I tell you, when I want things to move, I know who I put in front. Ah, no, no, you can't put everybody. There are some people that are just nice. They're just nice. No, no, no. But when I want things to move, I know who are my warriors. I just push. You know, I want you to do this. Just, just go and do this. And I stand at the back because I'm the pastor, you see? So I always... <laughs> push it! Is it push it? Then I come and say, oh, what did they say? Oh, really? 
Oh no. Okay, but listen, it's all good because the Holy Spirit is going to heal. So let me pray for that healing right now over your life. Then move forward. Because in your life, you need to know who you place where. Did you learn something? Yes. God bless you. You can stand up on your feet. Oh, praise God. I want, I want us to pray, but I want us to pray with these um, three things in our life. And these three things are very simple. We're going to pray, number one, Lord, open up my eyes. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus' eyes could see who is going to betray me. Jesus' eyes could tell who will deny me three times. When you reach a space in your life as a child of God, here's what spiritual maturity is all about. When you can see and know what's happening in a person, then you don't judge them then you don't push them away. Because you know, because all of us, we live our lives in phases and stages. There are people right now in your life that if you push them away, you will need them there tomorrow. So in order for you to understand, God has created us, all of us, differently. I want you to value people. Remember I said, love them biblically, all of them. Value them equally. But you treat them. In other words, the keys to your life those who access your inner circle, your, 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 your inner world, you choose. The same thing. There were 12 of them, but you know it's not all 12 of them who went up to the mountain. When Jesus was being transfigured, he yeah. took Peter, James, and John. Why? Because not everybody plays a role in your life closer to have that access in your inner world. With my crap. There are people that I can trust with all my ups and downs. So Jesus took them up. When he was up there, he was glorified and transfigured. But guess what? When Jesus was in the lowest of the valley in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took the same. Peter, James, and John. I need people around me, the Peter, James, and John, who can push me up high and I see glory. But when I go through the doldrums of my life, they are with me. You are a true friend of mine if you see my glory and see my gory stuff. And don't judge me. If you can be with me when I'm saying glory, hallelujah, and be with me in my weakest moments, and you say, Josh, I still recognize what you hold in my life. Who is in your life? What have you done with your life as you walk with God? So, Simple prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I can see the ones that you bring across my path. But number two, Lord, open up my heart. Because you see, you find out that sometimes you've got people that have got the potential. The heart is right, but the methodologies they use is wrong. Lord, open up my heart that those that are growing in you and those that are surrounding me, I can be able to shape their destinies as they walk with you. But the last prayer is, Lord, open my ears open my ears because quite often you realize that when you talk with people how do I know that a person still has got issues in their lives have you ever been in a conversation say I'm talking with heirs and we are discussing I'm telling about what I'm going through you know that a person has got still issues if they change the subject and they talk about themselves yeah. if I was talking about my issue and all you see now is about you when I was telling you about my story and you change it quickly to be about you, what's happening there is lack of affirmation and validation on your growing up. And as a result, any opportunity that rises up, you don't see my issue now, you see your issue. You forget that I am the one that came to you. I am the one that is telling you my story. So at the end of the day, how has it changed to be about you? God will bring different kinds of people in your life. But as you journey with him, always pray a prayer that, Lord, open my eyes. As I go to that business meeting, open my eyes. Lord, as I deal with my friends, we're going out for coffee. Open up my eyes, open up my heart, and open up my ears. 
because that's how you can fulfill the destiny set for you in Jesus name normally we don't join hands in this church but today I wanted to join your hands with your neighbor and I wanted to understand that the destiny that God has set for us can be fulfilled can be fulfilled when we stand together as the body of Christ can be fulfilled when we begin to say yes we love God's people we want to make sure they reach their goal we want to make sure that some of them right now they may not be where you want them to be but no judgments in this church we want to make sure that there's an awareness that can walk together with God's people in Jesus name shall we pray all of us lift up your voices to God yes father in the name of Jesus open up my eyes and open up my eyes oh God open up my heart that God I can do and fulfill the purposes of God over my life in the name of Jesus Christ I give you honor and I give you praise may you be glorified and I thank you father that I worship you right now for what you are doing thank you father that God you are to be exalted and you are to be worshipped even the beauty of your holiness Lord Jesus thank you Holy Spirit thank you for your kingdom established right now even as we walk with you in Jesus precious name thank you father hallelujah to your name hallelujah to your name Jesus name may God bless you your eyes are closed in the presence of the living God there might be somebody here today that said I want to I want to come back I want to come back to an alignment with my relationships. It can't happen. You can never find right relationships in your life until you come to the right relationship with the truth, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Therefore, if you are here today and you are saying, yes, Josh, please pray for me. I need Jesus in my life. I need to be forgiven my sins. I need to make a choice to say today, I've been hurt, I've been wounded, I've been betrayed against. In my life, I've gone through a lot of problems and tumultuous situations because of people and therefore I can't trust anybody in my life where I am I hear what you're talking about but there's no way I'm gonna allow anybody in my space listen to me listen to me you are meant for relationships Amen. you are meant you are never created to be an islander to yourself don't allow the enemy to bury you before your time don't allow the enemy to isolate you just know rightfully which people come into your life to add value because it's important. Other peoples can be like a rock or you can become like a sponge. God is going to attract you to the right people so that you can build your life to your destiny. So if you want to receive Jesus, maybe you want to come back to him. You've been a Christian before and but somehow you've just grown callous in your walk with him and you want us to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I am coming back to you, Lord Jesus. If you're saying that prayer, just lift up your hand where you are. I'm going to pray with you. I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to the true right relationship. Mr. Dewey was mentioning here in his communion, the value of understanding is not about what you want in this life. It's about doing God's will. When I take my wants and I begin to say, Lord, cover them. Let your will be done. You'll see things change in your life. You need Jesus. You need that relationship back with him. You want to come back to You want him to heal those areas that have been damaged, that have been wounded. I'll pray for you. Lift up your hand. I'll pray for you right now in Jesus' name. I see your hands. I see your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hands in Jesus' name. Let's say this prayer together. Church is the body of Christ. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm coming back home. I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Wash me with your blood. I make a decision today. My destiny is tied to people. Come first in my life. Change my life. And open my eyes. Open my ears. And open my heart. So I know where to place people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a big hand of praise in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. I would like you to continue to pray for us. As you can tell that our space is getting smaller and smaller. And I was just whispering to Trevor. And I said, we are now going to look for stage two of our building. Yeah, come on. We are going to look for it. And we believe that God is going to go before us. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. So pray if you, if, you, if you know of any places around this catchment area. 
I want to go far away from you. I want to make sure that God has called us to the Gosnos, to this place. So I, I, I want us to, to keep believing God together. And if you get anything, you can call me or you can call Pastor Prince or call Brother Trevor or, or Brother Edward, who is not here, and uh, uh, Brother Denny. These are the guys that are dealing with this uh, new building. And we pray that God is going to help us. But keep praying more that God will lead us to the right building. The building that has got a youth wing, the building that has got a Sunday school classes, yes. so that our families can come and enjoy God without any disturbances. In Jesus' my name. Father, I thank you. I thank you that this morning, your will over our will is all that we desire. Amen. Open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts that God Almighty will value the people that you bring across our path. May we be the type of people and type of a church, Lord God Almighty, who love God's people biblically, who value them equally. And Lord, and we treat them according to the way they come because you know where they are. So I pray now in the name of Jesus, may you bless your people. Bless them the rest of this week. Go with them in their various activities, homes and families and chores, and that God, your name will be lifted up over their lives. I thank you that God, you heal those that are sick and you touch every element in their bodies to your glory. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing. May you send us forth with your blessing and Christ be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people believe, shout and say, Amen. Amen.